Hello, long time no see. It's Sunday, I was almost gonna say January 16th, but it is indeed February 16th. Um, how time flies. So I, God, I cannot, well, I remember the last time I posted a video was, was, was right after my birthday party, so it's been a little over a month. But I, have, I had done a bunch of other, like I had recorded stuff and never put it together. So at some point that might get out there, at some point it not, it might not, but it's possible that something I say now could have been repeated because I don't remember what I said or what actually I, you know, whatever, cobbled together to put up in um, YouTube land. But anyway, it's Sunday, tomorrow's a holiday, so it's a lovely long weekend. What have I been doing? So, oh God. So last fr Wednesday, I don't know why I said Friday almost, last Wednesday was the first, the last day of Fat New York Fashion Week. And the Michael Kors collection show is always, he's got the same time slot. It's always 10 a.m. on the last day of Fashion Week. And so another fabulous, fabulous, like fun, full-on day. The show was down at the old American Stock Exchange down in the Financial District um, at 10. And, you know, we probably got there like quarter to 10. It, show, it started late, you know, maybe 10, 15, 10, 30. Um, it's always fun to see all the like fashion celebrities. Like Nina Garcia was sitting right near us. I saw Eva Chen walk by. Um, I saw Ken Downing again. I saw him last time. Um, but anyway, it was fun. It was a really good collection. You know, the thing about Michael Kors is he's true American luxury. Like his, the Michael Kors collection is really beautiful, beautifully made clothes. And this collection, there were so many things that I would wear. Um, so it was really great fun. And then there was a fabulous lunch at a restaurant that I've never heard of downtown as well called Crown Shy. And the, like every morsel was more delicious than the last. So really good, really fun. Michael Kors came. He, the last time I went to the show, like last, when I went last September, he did a meet and greet backstage after. But this time, instead of that, he came to the lunch. He didn't sit down and have lunch, but he came to the lunch. He did a little like spiel. And then he walked around and kind of like said hello to everybody and took a picture if you wanted and that kind of thing. Um, Another really amazing thing is, so, you know, Alicia is on the board of the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which is how I had initially become involved with the BCRF. Um, and there's this thing called Fabuish, where they grant wishes for, you know, people being treated for cancer, you know, people who have gone through it, whatever. Um, and there was this lovely young gal there who was from Colorado. Her wish was to go to a New York runway show. And so, because Alicia had like knows the people at Michael Kors, she had said to them, you know, would you do this? So they did. So this lovely gal and her husband were there. I mean, so sweet. They got went to the show. They were seated right next to me at the lunch, so I got to talk to them a bit. And um, the this, ugh, the poor thing. Not only did she go through cancer once, but she got a second diagnosis. I, she looked young. I don't know how old she is, but she definitely she couldn't be older than like early thirties nine-year-old kid, you know, has been through cancer treatment twice. God love her. But um, I think she was just so excited to be there. And it was so much fun. And then when Michael came, um, she got the opportunity. She and her husband went over and got the opportunity to really talk to him for, for a bit. And she was, it was just like, it was, it was just a lovely, lovely, lovely thing for them to do for her. And she was so excited to be there. Um, and then after we all, not we all, but a bunch of us went back to the Michael Kors Boutique on Madison Avenue, did a little shopping. And then after that, um, we went back to the showroom where you can see the collection that was just on the runway, like up close and personal. So that was amazing. And it was super cool because like so many details, obviously you don't notice because you're not up close, but like just so many beautiful, beautiful pieces of clothing. Um, so it was a long day, a very fun day. And then because Alicia was in town from Boston, she stayed with me Wednesday night and we went out to dinner locally in the neighborhood here. Um, and we just had a really fun night. 
So I had a busy week though. Like I wasn't really initially planning to go out Thursday night and then I ended up going out for a drink, well, for a drink, famous last words, for drinks with my sister and one of her friends. And then Friday night I was gonna stay in and then my brother pinged me and he was like, oh, do you wanna come over for dinner? I'll cook. So I went over there Friday night. But I was exhausted yesterday. I went to my sister's, um, one of her friend's kids was having a second birthday party. So I went with, you know, my sister, my brother-in-law, and my nephews to that. And then, but every chance I got, like, if I had two seconds on the couch, I was, like, nodding off. I was so tired. So I was literally in bed last night by 9.15. And um, I think I slept st almost straight through till 6.15, which I never sleep through the night. Um, I don't even think I got up to go to the bathroom, which never happens. And if I did get up to the, go to the bathroom, I was so asleep that I didn't even remember it. So it was a really good night's sleep. But anyway, I had my trainer at the gym today. I have Pilates tomorrow. And that's about it. But, oh, tonight, I'm going, um, now this is where it's going to be. I can't recall if I told you this. But I saw Jagged Little Pill, my sister and I did, a month ago. And I loved it so much. And my brother... I don't think he understood the talent that Alanis Morissette has. Like, I think he thought she was one of these, like, real produced, like, mark, you know, like, somebody made, you know, some PR or marketing person made her into who she is and didn't realize, like, she's a singer, songwriter, musician, because the Jagged Little Pill album, I mean, she had a writing partner, but she wrote most of that album when she was, like, by the time she was 19 years old. And so anyway, you know, they made a Broadway musical about it. It was written by Diablo Cody, who was the screenwriter or writer for um, Juno, which was a, you know, very, I think, both critically and, like, I don't know, what's the other word? But critically acclaimed and acclaimed by just regular people, you and me, who saw the movie and liked it. But anyway, so my sister and I saw it. We loved it so much. And I think after I told my brother, like, after he really understood the background of Alanis Morissette, he started listening to her music, and so he decided he'd like to see it. So when I was over there the other night, I'm like, why don't we see if there are tickets? And lo and behold, we're going tonight. So that leads me to where I am now. I'm on my way to meet him for a cocktail before the show, so I should get going. But the get up. I am wearing, this is an old Balenciaga blouse. Um, these are three by one jeans, Jean Vito Rossi booties, and just a Chanel necklace. Um, I'm wearing the Fendi coat that I bought at the outlets. And this bag, I just have to say, you all know, I have like a really nice bag collection. I mean a really nice bag collection. But ever since I bought that bag, I don't think I've changed it out. Other than maybe once when I was wearing, oh, when I, like when I was in Florida and I went to the hot pink luncheon. Oh God, I gotta tell you guys about that, but I don't have time now. But anyway, um, I haven't, I've hardly changed this bag out. So like tonight, I'm wearing Navi, Navy. I could easily wear my Navy Lady Dior bag, but why? Like, why should I? Because I just love this one so much. So, that's the long and the short of it. Maybe I'll catch up with you. Well, I don't know if I'll catch up with you tomorrow. But I do, we do have to talk about a few more things. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. Bye. Okay. Good morning. It is Sunday, February 23rd. I feel like I'm a little crooked here. Um... And pardon the appearance, but I figured it was like either do this video like this or I didn't know when I would get it done. Because, um, you know, Sundays are not my dress up days. Sundays are my, um, you know, get stuff done days. So I went to the grocery store this morning already. I have my trainer this afternoon at one and then I have my tennis lesson at four. So there's really no like getting dressed up for anything on a day like today. So having said that, I wanted to tell you about this. <laughs> so I, um, you may remember a couple years ago, shortly after my cancer diagnosis, I decided to buy myself my first Kelly. Well, I decided I was gonna try to buy myself my first Kelly. I didn't know if I would get one. And I had met one of the salespeople here at the boutique in New York on Madison Avenue. And 
when I had met him, I still didn't know whether I would want a Kelly or a Burke, and he'd given me his card and said, when you decide, you know, let me know, and if I can, I'll help you. So after my, um, my cancer diagnosis, I thought, you know, I'm gonna tr give myself a real treat. And um, I pinged him and told him the requirements for my Kelly. So I got a 32 centimeter red um, retorn Kelly. And it's beautiful and I love it. Fast forward, um, you know, I just turned 50 uh, like a month and a half ago. And, God, a month and a half ago? Where does the time go? Holy guacamole. But anyway, I was like, you know, I think I would like a, another Kelly in a little bit of a smaller size and in the, um, Hermes calls it gold, but it's tan. Um, so I pinged him a couple weeks ago and said, just what I told you, I just turned 50, I'd like a 28 centimeter Kelly um, in the gold color, preferably with the gold hardware, though I would, you know, I would take silver if that was what came along. And I figured, you know, if I was lucky, I'd hear from him in a month or two that he had something similar to what I wanted. Lo and behold, on Thursday, he emails me and he has it. And I was like, he's like, I, he, he's like, I have 28 centimeter Kelly Cellier, um, in the gold color with gold hardware, when would you like to come see it? I was like, oh my gosh. So anyway, so I went to see it on Friday and I obviously bought it. So I thought I would show you the new bag. And also while I was there, I picked up a little piece of ready to wear. So I thought I would also show you that. So without further ado, I've already, um, so after, I've already kind of taken it out of the box. I haven't used it yet. But after, on the way back from the Hermes store, Sandy was in town from Vermont, and we were going to the Michael Kors store because they had some stuff there that she wanted to try on. And actually, it turns out, they had something I wanted to try on, although I didn't know it at the time. But anyway, when we were there, they were like, oh, what's in the bag? So, of course, I had to show them. But, um, so that's why it's already, you know, unribbon. And anyway, you know, you guys all know what this looks like anyway, so we don't need to belabor the point. Um, okay, so on to the bag. Beautiful, beautiful. Kelly Cellier, gold hardware, still, you know, still has all the plastic and everything on it. But um, I was thinking, you know, at another time, if you were interested, I could do a comparison between this and my other Kelly, which would be, would I, which I think would serve two purposes. One, the difference between the Cellier style, which is the more structured style, and the Retorn style, which is my other one, which is the, you know, a little slouchier. And then also I thought um, it would be a nice size comparison of the 28 versus the, um, the 32 centimeter. But anyway, so this is the beautiful, beautiful bag. So it has inside, we don't need that, the dust bag, the, you know, the little lock and key. My salesperson tells me, like a lot of people, you know, put this on, but he, you know, I, I don't put it on because A, I don't really need to lock my bag, but B, um, I think when it swings, it, you know, can make marks on the bag and I don't want that. So I have not been putting the, that on. Um, and then in here is the long strap. I mean, the one thing I'll say, and then somewhere in here, oh yeah, is the, it's raincoat in case it's, we can't get it wet. But, um, you guys know, I'm sure, but the one thing, so the reason I prefer the Kelly over the Birkin is the fact that it has a long strap. The Birkin does not. Um, but the long strap is not long enough to be crossbody. However, you can easily put it up. See, like if I were going to go crossbody, that would be very weird. But you can still wear it as a shoulder bag. And, you know, usually I would carry it. I usually don't close it all the way. I usually kind of just do this and carry it like that. Um, but I have another strap actually that I bought at Hermes that 
is long enough to be crossbody. So if I want this crossbody, I can do that. So anyway, that's that is the bag. There you go. And I mean, this is no different than any other Kelly bag. I'm sure you guys have seen a million of these videos, but there are always, you know, two little front pockets you can slide things in and out of and one zip pocket in the back. So that is that. And then, so it turns out, you know, when you go, when you buy a bag at the Hermes store, they usually take you into, a, like, you know, they get the bag and they take you into a little private room to look at it. But the little private room in the bag area was, um, somebody was in there. So we went upstairs to the second floor. Here, I want to say this also, for people who love like luxury, even if you're not buying anything, walk through the whole Hermes store. Because most people go probably to the first floor where the textiles, like the scarves and the jewelry, you know, like the, you know, all the bracelets, the enamel bangles and the, the leather bracelets and whatnot, and the belts. In this store downstairs is where all the handbags are. But then there's a ready-to-wear floor, there's a shoe floor, there's an, a homewares floor. I mean, walk around, there's so much, just so much beautiful to see. But I'm yapping on because we went up to the second floor, which is where the ready-to-wear is, and um, to look at the bag just off at a little table in the corner up there. And he said to me, you know, oh, there's a long mirror over here. Come over here if you want to, like, look at it on, which I did. And as I was prancing over there, I spied something hanging up. And I was like, oh, I really like that. So I got this beautiful coat. I wish through video you could feel how soft this is, cashmere, with these lovely, like, equestrian, like, leather straps here. And, um at the pockets, and these are really deep pockets. So this, this is just a little snap. I guess I'll put it on, but it won't really, it will not be done justice in today's get up, but that's okay, you'll get the idea. Um, but of course I have a sweatshirt on underneath. Um, but anyway, so that is the coat, which would not look like this if I wasn't wearing this like bulky sweatshirt underneath. Um, but it's a beautiful, like, spring and fall weight coat. Um, and if you, you know, obviously it can be layered up or layered down, depending. But so that is that. Was I going to say anything else? I think that's the bulk of what I had to say. Um, I will, actually, I'll also insert a photo. So, as I said, we went to the Michael Kors store. Um... I think at the beginning of this video, I think by the time you see this, you'll already have seen me talk about the Michael Kors fashion show. But the day I was there and in the boutique, there's this beautiful, beautiful white suit. Um, oh God, I look terrible. I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, white suit with, it's not sequins. But like sparkly pinstriping, and I'm not describing, it's like beading to make the pinstriping. And I'm going to go up to Boston for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation Hot Pink Party this year. So I thought, oh, it would be great to wear that suit. So um, the gals had, coincidentally, I don't think they knew, I don't think they knew I was with Sandy, who was coming in that afternoon anyway. And literally as I walked in the door, she, she was like, oh, I just texted you. And I hadn't even seen it because my, my phone was like in my pocket or in my bag. Um, so she would, had texted me to tell me she got the suit in, so I tried it on. So I'll insert a photo, um, but I'm wearing that to the hot pink party and I need shoes and a bag for that, so that's next on the agenda. But um, I think that's it for now. Happy Sunday. And if I'm as productive as I hope to be, I'm gonna put this video together today and get it up today. So that'll be a treat. See you soon, bye. Actually, I did have something else to say about the getting of the bag. So when I went to get it, um, I said to my salesperson, I said, I can't believe how quick you got it. How did that happen? He said, I almost didn't even, he, he's like, I almost was going to wait a few weeks to tell you I had it because you were going to be like, like, don't, don't think this is ever going to happen again. Like, he's like, I don't know how it happened, but it did. Um, but I had asked him, because a friend of mine was asking, I had asked him, 
because she's interested in a 35 centimeter Birkin in the gold color. So I had said to him, what, like, what's the, you know, what's the process? How does it work? So he told me this. And as you know, it's different in store to store, but in this particular store, he said it's totally dependent. My one question was, are the 35s, because they're a little bigger, like a little less popular now, easier to get? And he was like, generally, yes, because they are, you know, right now people are into a little bit of a smaller bag. But he said there are, I forget how many salespeople, 40 or 50 salespeople in the store here in New York. And he's like, on any given day, we don't know, you know, what we're going to get in. And um, he's like, it really depends on, you know, who who's asking for what, like, who's asking for what at what time. And for example, like, sometimes they might have a really good client who's coming in from somewhere. So they might prioritize them over a local person, um, depending on, you know, because like, you know, they might have something in another week for the local person and the person flying in is flying in. But anyway, so he's like, it just totally depends on, it's, you know, supply and demand. They just don't know what they're getting when they're getting. But, um, so then when he wrapped the bag up, you know, like he, they rang me up. My favorite question is when you spend this much money, they're like, is that going to be cash or a card? I'm like, well, let me just whip all that money out of my purse in cash. And we were laughing about it. They're like, you'd be surprised. I'm like, I'm sure I would. But um, anyway, he, you know, he put it, wrapped it up, put it all in the bag, brought it out to me, and he jokingly said, you know, thank you so much for your patience. Because <laughs> uh, it literally, literally was two weeks. Um, anyway, I wanted to tell you that little tidbit. I thought it was useful and um, entertaining. Happy Sunday. Bye.